So in our year of abundance, we spent January talking about abundance as joy, the pillars of joy, and February abundance as love, the pillars of love. And now this month we're going to talk about abundance as prosperity, material and other kinds as well. Of course, joy and love are prosperity also. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is it? What is prosperity? How do you get it? How do you define it? Because it's a buzzword in today's world. Even Joel Osteen, <laughs> even some of the most mainstream um, congregations are talking about prosperity. Yes, it is in the Bible, but it's not just that it's in the Bible. It's in the flow of life that we receive what we give out, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over. I love that. I love that quote. Pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over. So what are you given in life? And what do you want in life? You know that song that Karen said, what, you can have it, what you want. What do you want? I don't always know what I want. And so first of all, let's just talk about this definition of prosperity. There's one that I really like, mental, emotional, and physical health, material good, relationships that work, ideas and timeliness, synchronicity. Edwin Gain says, what we want is a vitally alive physical body to provide a comfortable world home, worldly home for the spiritual being I am. Relationships that are satisfying, nurturing, honest, and work all the time. <laughs> work that I love so much, it's not work, it's play. And all the money I can spend. That's what Edwin Gaines says. Prosperity is to her. What is prosperity to you? Because the definition of a prosperity differs by the number of people that there are in the world. What makes you feel prosperous? And I know you've seen the movie The Secret, probably. You may have heard Edwin Gaines. You've heard possibly Tony Robbins. You've heard the people talking about the law of attraction, which is a law that is spoken of in new thought, meaning that everything is made up of energy. Well, scientifically, we do know this. Everything is, all matter is just energy moving in a way that we can't see. <laughs> and all energy is, has the potential of coming into matter and all matter has the potential to dissolve back into energy. So if you and I are energetic beings, we're electrical. Did you know that? We're actually electrical. We're energetic. If you've ever been um, with, a with a body of someone who has just recently passed away, you understand that the body, as beautiful and wonderful a temple as it is, the vessel of, that's carried this person that we love, we really recognize that the person is not there anymore. And what made the person is still there. Energy doesn't disappear, it changes form. And so if we're all pushing around energy and matter, we might as well push around in ways that are good for us, in ways that bring us what we want, and thus develop this idea of the law of attraction. If I give out only good energy, then only good will be attracted to my energy. And there is some truth in that. There is a lot of truth in that because to me, prosperity is more what I experience my life to be than what actually happens in my life. Can you understand that? Yes. There are people who have everything and they're miserable and they will never feel prosperous. And there are people who by my standards or yours have nothing and yet they feel prosperous. And yet they feel prosperous. I watched this video the other day. I went down a YouTube hole. That's, it's the first time it's ever happened to me that I just sort of went, oh, there's another one, there's another one. It tells you how tired I was. I was just like wanting to numb my mind, I guess. So I went and there was this guy that was um, giving, uh, 
he, he went to this, um, he had this hidden cameras, and he goes to this homeless man that's sitting in a wheelchair, and he asks the guy, I'm kind of cold, can I borrow your jacket? And the guy sitting there with nothing takes off his jacket and hands it to him. And he walks off. He said, I'll bring it back to you. He walks off. He sticks $500 in the pocket. And then he brings it back to the guy. And the camera stays on the guy, and the guy's just sitting there. He's glad he's got his jacket back, I guess. And at some point, he reaches into it, into his pocket, realizes all this money is there, and then he starts going around giving it to homeless people. To me, that is prosperity. That is prosperity. That is a man who understands I'm being cared for and I cannot be poorer by reaching out and caring for others. To me, prosperity means not having to, not having my happiness depend on whether I have stuff or I don't have stuff. My, to me, prosperity means I can have a room full of stuff and be perfectly happy, and I can have an empty room and be perfectly happy. So I guess prosperity means not being attached to outer things, which means if you're not attached to outer things, that you've got to work on your inner stuff. And so this sort of simplistic idea of I'm going to put out Positive energy and positive energy is going to come back. Well, you can just test it in the grocery store. Start smiling and saying hi to people. Sometimes they're taken aback. It might take them a minute to react, to react, but if you stay with it, hey, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? If you give out good energy, you get a good energy back. Always? No. <laughs> No, not always. Some people are so determined or, or so focused or in such pain or so not in their bodies but somewhere else completely. I can raise my hand on that one. In my head, thinking, I'm not even aware of what my body is doing, that they don't respond. But the point of that to me isn't that the attraction didn't work, you didn't give out enough energy, what it means is that you are successful in your prosperity because it doesn't matter whether someone else takes it or returns it or not. Because if you are giving in order to get something in return, that is not prosperity, that is bargaining. That is a transaction. And that's the problem that I have with the law of attraction and the law of abundance as it's taught in some New Thought churches is that it's very transactional. You give this, you get this back. You give this much, you get more back. And although I have seen that play out as the absolute truth in my life, I also know it's a little less transactional than that. So when we talk about manifesting, you hear that word manifesting, I decided what I wanted. I spent some time treasure mapping it. Maybe I cut out pictures in magazines and pasted them up. Maybe I spent a lot of my prayer time visualizing this is what I want, this is what I want. And maybe I got it. What I urge you to do, though, is to always look at the prayer underneath the prayer. If there's something you want, do you want money? Raise your hand if you want money. Do you want money or do you want what money can buy you? Because just having a handful of green doesn't do you any good unless you're going to spend it somewhere, right? So why do you want money? For what it can buy you? For feeling, because when you have it in your hands, you feel more secure? This is interactive. You're welcome to answer me back. Yeah. So you don't have to work. Money would mean you don't have to work. So really what you want is to not be in a job that you hate going to. <laughs> Which is why I love this definition from Edwin Gaines of work that I love so much that it's not work, it feels like play. Yeah. Now, I love my work. I love my work. And sometimes it still feels like work. 
But most of the time, it doesn't. Most of the time, it is my joy also. And even in the times when I am bogged down by the work of it, I would not consider doing anything else because I know that the joy is a given that I may put some work into it, but I'm not pouring into an empty hole. I am contributing to a big bucket full of joy that I get to partake of as well. So what is prosperity to you? Think about that for a minute. Anybody got an answer? Please feel, uh, feel free to call it out. Being centered. Being centered. Peace. Peace. Not having to worry. Do you know that you don't have to worry? <laughs> but so what you're hoping for perhaps is the conditions that allow you to, re to relax more. And I hate to tell you this, but it starts from in here, not from out there. But we're, we'll go into that. Bill. Knowing there is no such thing. Yes, not knowing lack, not perceiving lack, not believing. And when he says there's no lack, we see people who are lacking all the time. But we believe that there is a finite amount in the universe. And if some people have it, then some other people can't. And I believe that there's not a finite amount. There are people who hoard it. <laughs> there are people who hoard it. But there's still not a finite amount. Anybody else? Love. Love. Relationships. There's security in knowing that your love is imperturbable, that there are people in your life that you would love no matter what, and that there are people in your life that you believe would love you no matter what. That is prosperity. Bob likes to talk about prosperity as ideas. You think, oh, there's no way out of this. And then you go, maybe there isn't. I just don't know it. That's that surrender part Karen was talking about in the song. When an idea comes and you go, oh, I could do that. I hadn't thought of that before. That's prosperity. Right? When an answer comes... When a problem arises and you think, what am I going to do about that? And then, if you pay attention, and as the poem says, you keep feeding the birds so that they'll be there to eat the insects, so the insects don't eat your plants, then you will harvest an answer. But it doesn't come in a vacuum. Does that make sense? Prosperity to me is something that we participate in. It's something that we cooperate with because if we decide to believe that we live in a universe that where there is no lack, and that's hard to do when you look at the physical evidence around you, it's hard to believe that we live in a universe where there is no lack. Tell that to the people in Ukraine right now. Tell that to the people who are thinking, hoping it doesn't rain because they have no way, nowhere to go indoors to get out of the rain. And yet, we're responsible for our experience of our life. We can't always be responsible for the conditions of our life. We have a lot of control over those conditions, but, well, no, we have a lot of influence over those conditions, but we don't have control over outer conditions. The only thing that we have control over is right here. And so just like with joy and just like with peace, prosperity starts right here. And so I'm going to talk to you about what the Buddha says about prosperity. It's not what it, he called it, but the eightfold path. Right resolve. It means deciding, deciding what it is that you want, that you're willing to let your ill will go and cultivate loving kindness, that you're ready to let go of any cruelty and cultivate compassion, that you're ready to let go of anxiety and cultivate peace. 
Are you ready? The second on the Eightfold Path, right speech. What are you saying? How are the words that you are saying in your life bringing you stuff that you don't want? I'm going to tell on me and Bob this morning. We were running late. I was running late. I think it's just because I was tired. I don't know. I got up plenty early, but maybe I got up too early and I thought, oh, I got loads of time. But anyway, for various reasons, we were running late. And so what he likes to do when he sees that I'm agitated is to, is to calm me down because that's what a good partner does. Eh, no, that's not what happened. <laughs> When he sees me full of anxiety, he goes, <coughs> he tries to ratchet it up. I pointed this out to him. We're working on it. But, oh, you're going to be late. Oh, you're going to be late now. Oh, it's, it's too late for you to even be a little late. You're going to be a lot late. There's no way you're going to be, oh, we're just, we're going to, oh, oh. And then when I finally, if I have all my stuff and I'm sitting in the car, then he's wandering around doing, uh, I don't know what, which is, Making, making me more anxious, I'm deciding to be anxious. Perry, when I called her, assured me that y'all would not start church without me. So, you know, late is a relative term. But this idea that we can cultivate from the, I, I chose to let myself be ratcheted up. I chose not to cultivate peace and to fall into that. And I have to claim that for myself. I created that anxiety. He didn't help, <laughs> but, but I created it. And we have had to talk about that, and it's never going to happen again. <laughs> but what words am I using that come back to haunt me? The words that I've used all the years that he's made me late... Perhaps we're a contributing factor in him going, you're going to be late, you're going to be late, you're going to be late, it's not my fault. <laughs> Did you graduate from kindergarten? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, what am I doing that's making things, that, what, what words am I using that are returning to me in a way that I don't like? So the Buddha says, right speech, no lying, no rude speech, and no starting drama. <laughs> That's basically what the Buddha says, not in those exact words, but, but, but don't say something that you know that might harm, that might bring harm or hurt to someone else just because you know it. Don't tell them. Don't create drama between two people. Let them create their own drama. Don't get in there yourself. Leave the drama alone. Right speech. Right conduct or action. Okay, no stealing, no sexual min misconduct. Um, but more important, it's not just about stealing. It's about envy and greed. If you want to be prosperous, you don't ever have to want what someone else has. You only have to want what is rightfully yours. Greed and envy have no place in that way. Right livelihood. What are you doing in your work? Do you feel like you're contributing to the world in some way? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're working with orphans. You may be just working in an office building. But I can tell you, I have people who have worked in my office buildings before who were rays of sunshine that brought everything up. And I've also had the gloomy gusses that brought everything down. And everything affects everything else. And so, yes, we all want, per that. to me, that's prosperity, having meaning and purpose in my life. Having meaning and purpose, which might be connected to my work or it might not. But what am I doing that makes me feel like I have meaning in my life? Right effort which he calls preventing the arising of unwholesome states and generating wholesome states. To me, what that means is when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. That's prosperity. That's prosperity. When you find yourself in peace, note it. Be in it. Be with it. 
Feel what it feels like so that you can recognize it the next time it happens, so that you can even cultivate it. <coughs> right mindfulness, meaning being present, conscious of what we're doing, awareness of the impermanence of the body, and even our feelings and our minds. There's impermanence here. And so why be somewhere else? This is only going to last a short time. Let's be here with it. Right concentration, which is basically meditation, mindfulness, one-pointedness of the mind, which leads to insight. So that one-pointedness, what we like to call it in here, is seeing everything through the eyes of love. That's what I would call the one-pointedness of mind. And man, I don't, um, I don't always have that. But I always try to, occulti- to cultivate it with my awareness. And right view, and that's seeing through the eyes of love, but also this is particularly what the Buddha meant by it, being aware that actions have consequences. Prosperity doesn't come in spite of what you do. Your life comes to you as a consequence of who you are and what you give out. Now, I'm not saying if you're in a tsunami, you brought the tsunami on. But I'm saying that there are ways to be in a tsunami. I haven't been in one, so that's easy for me to say. Our actions and beliefs have consequences. The Buddha believes that our, believed that our actions have consequences after death, that we are creating karma at all times. And so that law of attraction is kind of like the law of karma, that what we give out, we receive. But as we, and I'm going to go more, um, more uh, specifically into prosperity as we unfold the next few weeks, but what I would like you to think about this week It's what is your definition of prosperity? What does it mean to you to be prosperous? And if a word comes, think about maybe what's behind that word. Because if the word is Mercedes, do you, so what is, what does that mean to you? Is that a symbol of prosperity? Do you want people to understand that you're prosperous? Or is it a symbol of good German engineering? I don't know, I'm making stuff up right now. But I want you to think about what prosperity means to you, and then when you think about that, think about what could be behind that. Just like in money. You want what money buys, you want security. You want to not have to work and worry your whole life about what's, what's coming next. And the truth is, part of abundance, part of prosperity, which we've already talked about when we talked about love and joy, is acceptance. That things will be as they are. And you can cooperate with them and create joy and love and harmony in your life. Or you can fight against them. And no matter how much you have, keep yourself miserable. So as we go forward in talking about prosperity, I want to say one last thing, um, or maybe two last things. So the underbelly of this law of attraction to me, and it's in, and I call it spiritual malpractice, is if you begin to believe that because bad things happen to you, it is because it's your fault. First of all, even if it were true, how is that helpful? We start with where we are, we accept what is, and we move from there. But it, when we begin to blame people, what have you done? You're not creating health in your life. Why are you ill? Um, we need to be really careful about that and blaming ourselves. Oh, this is all my fault. Well, you know, there were contributing factors. Lord knows that I contribute to my ill health at times. But that doesn't mean I get to blame myself for them. This idea that everything bad that happens to us is something we brought on is very destructive and very hurtful. And not long before I decided to be a minister, I was sitting in a retreat where a woman 
was talking about how the law of prosperity worked in her life. And she said when she was pregnant, she, before she got pregnant, she knew she wanted a girl and she knew it needed to be healthy. And so she prayed and prayed and prayed and she manifested a healthy baby girl. And in that room was a friend of mine who had had seven miscarriages. And the implication there was, you didn't do it right. I was very glad to be there with her to say, nuh uh, <laughs> don't believe this. Don't believe this. Things happen. We have influence. We have influence. And I do believe that giving is part of it. This is what we're going to unfold. We've got to learn how to let go of things. So that means letting go of all the things we're hurting on, that we're, that are, that we're holding on to. That means forgiveness. That means letting go of material prosperity, not holding on to it with tight fists, but understanding like that homeless man that you can be a conduit for good to flow, that as soon as you stop it, as soon as you close your fist, you're no longer a conduit, and now you are in lack because you are limited by how much your fist can hold at this moment. We're going to also talk about what it means to be able to receive. How many of us have good all around us and we don't receive it? All of us? Me, for sure. Every single one of us. So we're going to talk about cultivating a receiving heart, a heart that knows how to receive what is there, a heart that knows how to first notice it and then receive it and then give thanks for it. And we're going to talk about how we experience life as joy, as love, as prosperity. 